Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and today I'm going to talk, well I'm actually going to talk about carrots but I'm also going to put those carrots in the context of my general sort of change in strategy which is to grow more staple veg. So when I started gardening I basically got the list of the 10 uh, highest value crops and I really started just planting those. Um, and it was served me well for the last three years, but now I'm realising that by a bit of clever interplanting, higher density planting, and follow on, managing my follow on crops better, uh, I can actually get really high value yields out of the beds and still grow a lot of staples. And so that's really resulted in a significant change for me because it's really nice to grow the staples. Um, it does take up a little bit more space, um, but then it's easier as well so you know th there's lots of benefits um, and of course i've got my close family who i can now feed those staples to uh, and that makes a big difference um, because it's really nice to try and get them fully self-sufficient and fully organic in their diet as well as debbie and i um, yeah so when, when we're talking about carrots i mean we eat carrots all year round and we're self-sufficient so and that, that's a decision that we've made which is not to buy veg um, and that means we have to be fairly creative uh, to make sure that we've got a really rich supply of veg all year round and carrots is one of those things that we really like and uh, we don't want to go without um, very occasionally maybe if we're short on carrots we'll eat golden beetroot as an alternative uh, because golden beetroot stores a bit better than carrots um, but actually to be honest we've never had to do that but sometimes we just eat a bit more golden beetroot and a little bit less carrot just to get us through to the end of the year so carrots so I'm actually going to have a little clip on video of me planting carrots in a minute and those are the carrots that we're planting for uh, late autumn uh, and winter and early spring and I planted them slightly later than I wanted to for a number of reasons which I won't bother going into but next year I will try and plant them at the end of June probably about two weeks earlier than, than the, this batch just that two weeks makes a little bit of difference um, but anyway we'll see how they do um, I'm pretty confident we'll get a decent crop um, so we grow carrots, sometimes we grow carrots in some of my high value covered beds on the polyton on the allotment, my allotment. Um, and so we'll grow them in coal frames or mini hoop tunnels. Uh, but those are only for the very earliest carrots. Uh, all of the main crop carrots are all just grown outside in ordinary beds, nothing fancy, with, but I will use a, a row cover to protect them. Uh, but there's always a succession or an interplant uh, going on so in the case of the carrots that I'm going to show you in a minute those were initially garlic um, elephant garlic and garlic uh, but they were interplanted with strawberries and now that the garlic's come out the strawberries have been cut back there's now loads of space in the beds to plant spring onions and carrots and then those half of those will come out the nants will come out and they will have um, garlic replanted and then some of the not all some of the autumn king will come out and then they will be interplanted into the gaps that i've made in the autumn king beds um, and that's where the elephant garlic is going to go uh, so you know that's a really nice so three different crops um you know a nice high value strawberry crop um a low value uh, carrot crop uh, and a high value garlic crop so all, you know all really nice out of a single bed uh, and it's pretty much the same with the onions you know the onions are being interplanted with uh, sorry succession planted with spinach and lettuce and then at the end, about October, end of October time, the spinach and lettuce basically are not particularly productive at that time. Our spinach and, and lettuce will switch uh, to higher value beds on my plot that have got covers. Um, 
and be replaced by field beans and then we've got a fa we'll have a fantastic crop of field beans from sort of December time all the way through uh, until uh, we're ready to plant the brassicas so uh, you know a high value crop in the field beans and it doesn't sound like field beans that sound like high value crop but when you harvest them for spinach greens they are an incredibly high value crop um, and then you get the added spin-off benefit um, of them feeding the soil for the brassicas. So with that context and introduction, let's get on finally and uh, plant some carrots. So here's the bed as it looks and you can see that there's a lot of space down the centres uh, here where I can get three good rows of carrots in. And the strawberries are intruding a bit <clears throat> and Normally I would leave the leaves on a little bit longer because I would want the runners, but right now we've got an absolute abundance of strawberries, so we don't need any more runners. Uh, so I'm cutting the strawberries back. People talk about mowing uh, the strawberries, but uh, I'm cutting them obviously. And uh, just cutting all the old leaves off, leaving any new leaves, of which there's not that, very, not that many. Uh, the crowns are intact and so new leaves will come up from there pretty soon. I've never cut them back like this before at this time of year, but uh, it needs must because I can get a lot more sowing space with the strawberries cut back than I could before. And it leaves these centers between the strawberry plants and that's where I'm gonna plant a clump of spring onions. So all the way down here, there's effectively gonna be a wall of spring onions uh, protecting the carrots from the carrot fly but I won't be relying on that because at this time of year you get we get terrible carrot fly here. So I'll also be building a frame to protect them. Whew, so that was a bit of a slog, cutting those out. I mean, it doesn't look like a slog, so it looks really easy. But this bed over here was quite hard to do because I had to get right over to the far side without uh, standing on the bed. And uh, so that was lots of stretching. Um, yeah, I'm pleased that's done. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about planting carrots uh, and why this bed is so ideal for the purpose, really. Uh, so if we just get this little stick that's just lying around. So this bed is basically just a six inch bed uh, and it's built straight on top of this grass. Uh, now that works without cardboard or anything else um, provided you do it in October time which is when we built these beds because the grass isn't growing and the weeds aren't growing and so by the time they start growing they're all rotted basically they've rotted uh, six inches down so I've just dug nine inches probably ten inches perhaps uh, down into there and we can see a few things so the first thing you can see is it's moist down to about four inches and then it's pretty dry thereafter but actually that four inch layer is the compost that I mulched on top of the sandy soil so that's that bit there is the sandy soil uh, there's no sign basically of the original grass other than these tiny little roots and whether you can just see see them uh, and of course they're rotting down nicely uh, providing some low level nutrients now this so let's talk a bit about planting carrots this is what you need for carrots lovely fine compost and sandy soil compost at the top, sandy soil at the bottom. And so that is what I'm planting into and this does very nicely or hopefully will do very nicely for carrots. You want it quite um, uniform because you don't plant carrots very deep. I tend to plant mine about half an inch, some people say a quarter of an inch but I think they dry out too much if you do that so maybe even a little bit lower than half an inch um, you need to cover them with fairly fine compost and this is fairly fine compost but you do want it quite level otherwise you end up getting parts that are an inch deep parts that are 
half an inch deep, parts that are a quarter of an inch deep. Um, that's not ideal. The ground wants to be really well watered. So I actually watered this bed for 15 minutes with the hose pipe this morning. Um, and as you can see, it's actually moist down to about six, uh, four inches, um, which is not too bad. Um, I am actually going to water it again now. Uh, then I'll put the drills in and I'm actually even then going to water the drills because it's very hot at the moment. And so even if you make a drill, you know, this sort of size, um, it's going to be dry uh, by the end of the day. And so once I've planted the carrot seeds, I'm going to have to water twice a day. Now on a smaller bed, what I would do is I would actually just put some hessian over the surface of the bed or anything really like a shade cloth or something like that just to reduce the level of water evaporation. I don't actually have anything big enough uh, to cover these two beds. So for now, it's just going to have to be the way it is. And as I said, I'm also going to plant little clumps of stir on onions um, in between each of the uh, stations of strawberries. So in this bed, there, that's where the Autumn King's going. Okay, so I'll put the drills in. Hopefully you can see roughly how deep they are. And to some extent I can control the depth just by the amount of compost that I uh, put over them when I fill them in. I make the drills just with a piece of wood, just with the edge of a piece of wood. So just put, put the piece of wood like this. Just rub it up and down a little bit. So that's the drills. Now, I'll just talk a little bit about this bed and its history. So basically, we had elephant garlic down the centres, uh, strawberries down the outside, harvest a fantastic crop of strawberries, more than enough to eat fresh and make incredible amounts of jam. Um, so we don't want any more strawberries. And you can see that it's not planted particularly densely. That reduces the amount of compost we need, uh, fertiliser rather, it reduces the amount of watering we need to do. And we get really nice, healthy strawberries with very little uh, mould or anything like that, losses due to that. Um, it's really easy to pick them. And I say we get more than enough. Leaves us the space in between to put the onions in and then carrots. So three rows of carrots. So six rows of carrots in total. I'll actually work out how many carrots that's going to be in a minute, uh, but it's a lot. And then in October, I'll put the garlics in the centres, so the rows of carrots are here and here. In the centre, put the, ga the garlic, the elephant garlic, so there's going to be two rows of elephant garlic down the centre. So that will uh, not disturb the carrots one jot. Uh, the carrots won't disturb the garlic, and the uh, carrots will be out long before they're uh, shading the garlic to any significant extent. So that's the logic and actually that's part of my the strategy that kind of convinced me to grow more staple crops the fact that I can get lots of different crops out of the same bed and basically the cost of the bed and the cost of the compost that filled it was actually covered by the harvest from the strawberries and the elephant garlic this year so it's already paid for itself um, and you know obviously the uh, the finances just get better and better so i'm going to get on and do some planting okay so that's the autumn kings planted and the stakes are not to the canes rather are not to mark the rows they're there to discourage cats and birds from digging around and disturbing the newly planted seeds and they do actually seem to work um and obviously they don't get in the way of uh, the carrots and I'll remove them once the carrots are a couple of inches high. But actually by then, 
I'll have the nets on. Now I'm not putting the nets on yet, and um, there's a few reasons for that. One is I forgot them, um, they're at home, but actually I wouldn't put them on now. The, the real reason that I'm not putting the nets on is because I want to keep an eye on weeds. So I left this bed two weeks after I took the garlic out um, and took any weeds out uh, that started growing during that period. But for the next two weeks, and basically until the carrots start germinating, I'm going to be pulling weeds uh, as small as I can pull them. And because once I put the nets on, I'm not going to... Uh, well, actually, just before I put the nets on, I'll do a few things um, related to thinning. So I will thin the carrots to, I think, on this, because they're Autumn King. I know it says 4 inches and 12 inches between rows. I don't think that's necessary. Uh, I think I've got about 6 or 7 inches between these rows. That seems to be fine. Um, it depends whether you want to grow giant carrots or not, really. I don't want to grow giant carrots. Uh, I want moderately sized ones and lots of them, so I'll do about 3 inches between... Uh, and on six inch rows I'm hand weeding I don't need to get a um, a hoe down the centre of the rows or anything like that in fact once I've done that final weed and that final thin I'm just going to leave them now obviously I don't want any carrot root fly to get inside here uh, when I'm doing the thinning um, and so there's a few things that I'm going to do for that so the first thing is I am going to grind up in the blender some garlic and onions and I'm going to water all over the bed with garlic, this horrible garlic and onion smell. Well, actually it's not that horrible. Um, and that will really confuse the uh, carrot root fly. They will really struggle to find where I'm actually thinning the carrots. I'm going to put the thinnings into water so that they don't give off much of an aroma while I'm doing that. Um, and then because I've got lots of onions uh, outgrowing and I'm trying to keep them free of onion fly and I've got various other pests, I, I'm watering with nematodes anyway uh, at that time and I'll water these beds with the nematode that attacks the carrot root fly. So it's kind of belt and braces. Um, but I'll show you how I'm going to put the nets up later and I think late in the season you've just got to use nets if you early in the season perhaps if you're growing resistor fly or something like that uh, and you don't thin uh, and you don't weed you can probably avoid carrot root fly without nets but um, my experience around here on the allotment site it's uh, you just got to use nets really so that's what I'm going to be doing and the net I'm going to be using is basically the same one as I've got on the brassica case there. It's a nice, fine, Enviromesh type net. I don't think it is actually Enviromesh, although it might be. Um, and it's going to be interesting how I'm going to seal it in this bed because of this fence here. But I've got a plan, so we'll see that soon. So in that bed, I'm actually putting Nance fives. Um, and obviously these can be... Uh, harvested late normally you grow them early but I want this bed cleared um, by October time and that's because I'm planting garlic in here and I'm putting three rows of garlic down the centre and basically that would be the same place that the uh, carrots are in whereas in the Autumn King bed because I'm planting elephant garlic and I'm planting it in the centre of the rows because I'm only planting two rows um, I can afford to leave these in the ground for longer and so I chose Autumn King because they uh, stand in the ground better than Nance 5. I actually like the taste of and the look of Nance 5 more. Okay so that's all done uh, just got to put the canes on here uh, I should have mentioned when you're planting the carrots after you've covered them you just tap them down lightly give it another good water but a lot of people don't recommend watering the soil around the carrots just water the the run down the center um, and that's because of weeds but as I said because I've effectively done the uh, stale seed bed technique here 
by leaving it uh, uncovered for a couple of weeks, let all the seeds germinate, pick all those seeds out, do that for another two weeks, then cover it, then leave it. I don't think I'm going to have any issue with uh, with weeds using that approach. What I did find is that I've got a few, when I took all these strawberries out, a few gaps where probably we either ran out of strawberry plants or something died. Um, and there's a few big gaps. I think there's probably only about five of them. But I do have these strawberries here, same variety, around the perimeter here. So I'm going to root some runners of these. And there's some lovely uh, candidates. And then when I take these out, these, so I'm not going to cut these back yet, but these are going to be going to pots. And these are going to be my uh, strawberries for growing in the polytunnel. Uh, actually hanging baskets, uh, hanging from the roof in the polytunnel. I found the ones in the hanging baskets did really well last year, but the ones that I had just in pots weren't substantially earlier uh, than, the, uh, than the ones outside. So I'm not going to bother with the pots. Uh, there's so many things you can put in the polytunnel that benefit from the protection. And if strawberries don't, then they won't be in there. So, yeah, so that's really good. And then I'll also root enough runners off these to replace them around the border. Uh, and then next year, uh, well, actually, because of crop rotation, it will be this bed uh, where I'm doing that. But, um, yeah, and that way I keep getting uh, two-year-old um, really healthy strawberries uh, for the polytunnel. So with that, I think I'm going to call it a day. So these are the uh, spring onions that I planted, and they're not actually spring onions, they're uh, onions stew on. I uh, planted about nine in each little hole, just made the hole with my finger about a centimetre and a half deep. Um, I'm not convinced that they'll grow, but I will also be planting spring onions in module trays. The benefit of the module tray is that you can germinate them in cooler temperatures. I think at this time, midsummer, it's a little bit warm to get uh, onions germinating, or at least that was my experience last year. But uh, anyway, I thought I'd give it a go. The seeds are effectively free, so let's get on. So I hope you like that video and please give me feedback because you know I'm a newbie gardener. I've only been gardening for a couple of, for three years now. Uh, I know I've got a lot to learn. Um, and what I learn, I share. See you soon.